Hey there, you looking kind of cute. Please consider subscribing and check out our Patreon for more. Enjoy the video. Jill sat alone on the couch in the living room, staring blankly at the beige walls. The house was eerily quiet now that the funeral guests had left. She couldn't believe Jake was really gone. After 32 years of marriage, it didn't seem real that she would never see his face or hear his voice again. Their relationship had been complicated. They'd had their ups and downs like any couple. But Jill had always loved Jake deeply, even when he was difficult. She knew he had loved her too, in his own way. But things had become strained between them over the last couple of years, especially after that disastrous weekend at the lake house with their son Robert. Jill's mind drifted back to that weekend two summers ago. The memory of it still pained her. She and Jake had rented a small lake house, inviting Robert and his girlfriend Samantha to join them for a relaxing getaway. But the weekend had been anything but relaxing. From the moment they arrived at the lake house, Jake's criticisms of Robert began. At dinner the first night, Jake made a snide comment about Robert's girly drink of white wine while Jake drank beer. Robert's face burned red, but he said nothing. Later, when Robert offered to help Jill clean up, Jake snorted. Why don't you let Samantha handle the cleaning, son? Wouldn't want you to chip a nail. Robert's eyes narrowed, but again he held his tongue. Jill shot her husband a warning glance, but he ignored it. The next morning, things got worse. Robert came downstairs wearing a pink polo shirt. Well, well, look who's all dressed up, Jake sneered. You waiting for the Easter bunny, son? Lay off, Dad, Robert muttered. Hey, I'm just busting your balls a little, Jake said. But you might want to man up a bit if you ever want to attract a real woman. Robert's face turned crimson. He started to respond, but Samantha touched his arm gently. It's okay, babe. Let's go get some air, she said, guiding him outside. Jill followed them. I'm so sorry about your father, she said to Robert. Please just ignore him. Robert shook his head, clearly upset. It's fine, Mom. I'm used to it by now. Samantha gave Jill a knowing look. They both knew Jake's hurtful teasing was anything but fine. Later that day, when Robert and Samantha went into town, Jill confronted her husband. Don't you think you were too hard on him this morning? She asked. Jake shrugged. I was just busting the kid's balls a little. Can't he take a joke? This isn't funny, Jake, Jill said sharply. Our son is really struggling with his identity. He's trying to figure out who he is, and he needs our love and support right now, not our criticism. Jake shook his head. Who he is? He's a man, Jill. Or at least he's supposed to be. All this artsy, sensitive things has turned him into a loser. Stop it, Jill snapped. He's an amazing person and he needs our acceptance. Jake snorted derisively. Well, I accept the fact that my son needs to grow a pair and start acting like a man. Otherwise, no woman will ever take him seriously. Jill glared at her husband, fury rising inside her on Robert's behalf. But she knew from long experience that arguing with Jake any further would be futile. The rest of the weekend passed painfully. Robert avoided his father, spending most of his time on long walks alone. Jake made no effort to apologize or bridge the gap with his son. By the time Jill and Jake said goodbye to Robert and Samantha on Sunday evening, the hurt and anger between father and son was palpable. In the two years since that weekend, Jake's relationship with Robert had never recovered. They rarely spoke or saw each other. Jake made no effort to understand his son, continuing to make snide comments about Robert's artsy-fartsy interests whenever his name came up. And now Jake was gone. Their last conversation had been an argument on the phone a week ago. Robert had called to tell his parents he got a role in a community theater production. Jake instantly dismissed it. Community theater? What, are you gonna wear a feather boa and makeup in this one, son? He mocked. Robert hung up on him. When Jake called back and got the answering machine, he left a scathing message, calling Robert worthless and telling him he'd never amount to anything as an actor. Jill had deleted the message so Robert wouldn't hear it. She was used to protecting her son from his father's cruelty. 
Now she wished she'd been stronger in standing up to Jake over the years. Maybe she could have helped heal the rift between them. Uh, but it was too late now. Wiping away a tear, Jill glanced up at the sound of footsteps. Robert entered the living room, his expression somber. How are you holding up, Mom? He asked gently. Jill sighed. As well as can be expected, I suppose. It's still so hard to believe he's gone. Robert nodded, sitting down beside her on the couch. I know, I can't believe it either. He hesitated. To be honest, I don't know how to feel. I know I should be more upset, but with everything between me and Dad, his voice trailed off. Jill squeezed his hand. It's okay, sweetheart. I know your relationship with your father was complicated. Robert swallowed hard. I feel guilty for not caring more that he's gone. But after the way he treated me, his eyes filled with tears. Oh, honey. Jill wrapped her arms around him. You have nothing to feel guilty for. I know how much your dad hurt you over the years. Robert hugged her back, laying his head on her shoulder for comfort like he used to do as a child after a bad day of bullying at school. I tried so hard to get him to accept me for who I am, he said softly. But he was never satisfied because I didn't fit into his narrow view of how a man should be. Jill stroked his hair soothingly. I know, sweetie. Your father had such rigid ideas about gender roles. But you are perfect just the way you are. Robert pulled back to look at her, his eyes glistening. Do you really mean that, Mom, even though I'm different? Of course I do, Jill said firmly. I'm so proud of you for having the courage to be yourself, even when it's difficult. I love you so much, and nothing will ever change that. Robert's face crumpled, and he started to cry. Jill held him as he wept, wishing she could take away the years of pain he had endured from his father's rejection. Finally, Robert drew in a shaky breath and sat up, wiping his eyes. I'm sorry, he mumbled. You have nothing to be sorry for, Jill assured him. It's okay to grieve the relationship you wished you could have had with your dad. But please don't ever doubt how much I love you and accept you. Robert managed a small smile. Thanks, Mom. He was quiet for a moment. Can I tell you something? Of course, you can tell me anything, Jill said. I've been seeing a gender therapist for a few months now, Robert said, and I'm pretty sure I'm transgender. I've felt like a girl trapped in the wrong body since I was a kid. I just could never tell Dad, but I want to start transitioning and live as my true self now. Jill felt a wave of emotion. Her heart ached for all the years Robert had felt compelled to hide this essential truth about himself. But she was filled with pride at his bravery and finally embracing his identity. I'm so glad you're able to start living authentically, she said, taking his hand. And I will support you in this 100%. I just want you to be happy. Robert's eyes filled with tears again. Thank you, he whispered. You have no idea how much that means to me. I was so scared to tell you. Jill squeezed his hand tightly. All I care about is that you feel loved and accepted exactly as you are. Whatever you need, I'm here for you. Besides, I already knew. Robert looked up, surprise etched on his made-up face. You knew for how long? Since you were about 13, I'd find my dresses and jewelry hidden away in your closet when I was cleaning. Jill smiled sadly. I'm sorry I never said anything before now. I didn't want to embarrass you. And honestly, I was afraid of how your father would react. Robert nodded, fresh tears welling up in his eyes. Dad hated me for it. He thought I was some kind of freak. Your father struggled to understand anything outside of his own experience, Jill said gently. But I want you to know that you are not a freak. You are my child, and I love you exactly as you are. Robert broke down, sobbing into his mother's embrace. She held him tightly, letting him cry out years of shame and fear. After some time had passed, Robert's tears slowed to a stop. He sat up, wiping the ruined makeup from his cheeks. I'm sorry for breaking down like that, he mumbled. You have nothing to apologize for, Jill repeated firmly. I'm glad we're finally talking about this. She paused, considering her words carefully. While I support you fully, life may be 
easier if you're selective about when and where you present yourself as feminine. Small-minded people can make things very difficult. Robert nodded. I know. I just feel so free when I can be my true self. But you're right. It's not safe to be out all the time. Well, you're always free to be yourself here. Jill gestured at his outfit. In fact, why don't you wash those clothes and we can hang them on the line with mine? They'll dry in no time on a sunny day like today. Robert's face lit up. Really? You don't mind the neighbors seeing? It's none of their business what we hang on our line. What matters is that you feel comfortable being yourself here. Thanks, Mom. Robert hugged her tightly again. You have no idea how much that means to me. Why don't you go freshen up? I'll make us some lunch. Robert headed upstairs, his steps noticeably lighter. Jill got up and went to the kitchen, feeling as though a weight had been lifted from her shoulders. She was glad they'd finally had this talk. After changing into jeans and a t-shirt, Robert came back downstairs. He joined his mother on the back patio where she had set out sandwiches and lemonade. It's so nice out today, Jill said, closing her eyes and turning her face up to the sun. Robert smiled. Yeah, it's beautiful. They ate in comfortable silence for a while, simply enjoying the warm spring day. A light breeze ruffled the leaves of the oak tree in the yard and caused the wind chimes to tinkle gently. Birds flitted around the feeder, twittering and pecking at the seed. Remember how much Dad hated those birds, Robert remarked, watching a sparrow perch on the feeder. He said they made too much noise and were pests, Jill laughed. Oh, yes, he used to complain constantly about them. I told him scaring them away would only mean more bugs in the yard, but he didn't care. He just wanted things to be quiet and orderly all the time. Her laughter faded. He wasn't always like that, you know? When we first met, he was so relaxed and easygoing. We used to have so much fun together. Robert nodded, his expression thoughtful. Yeah, I vaguely remember him smiling more when I was really little. But after you had me, it was like he got more and more uptight. Like he wanted me to be some perfect miniature version of himself or something. He did have such high expectations for you, Jill agreed. I think not having a son who enjoyed typical boy things like he did was hard for him to accept. She reached out and put her hand over Robert's. But that was his limitation, not yours. I'm so sorry he made you feel ashamed for just being yourself. Robert squeezed her hand, his eyes glistening. It's okay, Mom. I mean it hurt, but I know now he was wrong. With you on my side, I feel like I can handle anything. Jill's heart swelled with love for her child. I'll always be on your side. I'm so proud of you. They sat a while longer, watching the birds and reminiscing about better days gone by. The sun sank lower in the sky, casting long shadows across the yard. Jill smiled as she watched a pair of cardinals fluttering around the bird feeder in the backyard. The brilliant red males danced around their more muted female counterparts, putting on an aerial show. Aren't they just lovely, Jill said. I could watch them all day. Robert nodded, sipping his lemonade. They sure are pretty. And it's so nice out today. Jill patted Robert's knee. It really is. Your father would have loved this weather. I'm going to miss him. Robert said quietly, even if we didn't get along. Jill squeezed his hand. I know, I'll miss him too, but the pain will get easier in time. They sat in silence for a few minutes, listening to the breeze rustling the leaves and the cardinal's cheerful songs. Jill finally stood up. Why don't we go out for some ice cream? I think we could both use a little treat after the week we've had. Robert smiled. That sounds great. Jill hesitated, thinking. Why don't you go upstairs and change? Put on that pretty sundress I saw you wear once. Robert looked surprised. How did Jill know about the dress? Really? You don't mind if I... Jill shook her head. Of course not. I want you to be comfortable being yourself. I think that dress will look lovely with your complexion. Robert's eyes lit up. Okay, I'll go get changed right now. He jumped up and hurried into the house, nearly tripping over himself in excitement. Jill chuckled softly and tidied up the porch while she waited. 
Fifteen minutes later, Robert reappeared. He was wearing a knee-length sundress with a floral print. The soft, flowing fabric accentuated his slim figure. His long hair was smoothed down neatly and parted at the side. He'd even put on a touch of mascara and lip gloss. Oh, honey, you look wonderful, Jill said, smiling. Robert blushed. Thanks, Mom. I feel so pretty in this dress. As you should. Here, let me get a picture before we head out. Jill snapped a photo on her phone and showed Robert. He grinned. I look like a girl. You certainly do, Jill laughed. They walked arm in arm to the car. As they drove to the ice cream parlor, Jill kept glancing over at Robert. He sat happily, enjoying the breeze ruffling his skirt. The afternoon sun lit up his face. For the first time in years, Robert looked truly content. The heavy burden he'd carried, the burden of hiding himself and enduring his father's criticisms, had been lifted. Jill's unconditional acceptance had given him permission to be who he was. As they sat outside under a striped umbrella eating their cones, Jill felt a swelling of love for her child. With Jake gone, they could start a new chapter, one with space for Robert to explore his identity. Things would be better now. The future suddenly seemed bright again. This was the best idea, Mom, Robert said, polishing off the last bite of his chocolate ice cream. I feel so free. Jill smiled and wiped a smudge of ice cream off his cheek. I'm glad, sweetie, and I'm happy to see you smiling again. They talked casually, enjoying the afternoon. Robert chatted about wanting to redecorate his room, maybe with some frilly curtains and a vanity table. Jill encouraged him, suggesting they go shopping together. As the sun dipped lower in the sky, Jill glanced at her watch. We should probably start heading home, but I want you to know how proud I am of you, Robert. You're perfect just the way you are. Robert's eyes turned misty. Thanks, Mom. That means everything to me. I love you. Us, I love you too, sweetheart. Jill paid the bill and they walked slowly back to the car. She put an arm around Robert's slender shoulders, pulling him close. This was how it was always meant to be, Jill thought. Just the two of them moving forward together. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out Patreon for a lot more content and early access to YouTube videos.